Hello everyone, my name is Rolando Scamilla and I am with Ivana de la Garza, Elizabeth Camez, Brian Garvan, and Jose Cavazos, and we're all going to be presenting the Tacoma Narrows Bridge Ethics Case Study that we performed here. Throughout the presentation, the audio clips should play by themselves, but if they do not, please go find the speaker icon on the slide, hover over it or click it, and then click play. If you don't see any speaker icon on any of the slides, then please refer to the YouTube link here where the presentation is presented automatically in a video format. Thank you all and hope you enjoy the presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Ivana de la Garza and I am part of group two. And today we will be presenting our ethics case study for our final project. After a careful consideration and analyzing each idea the team presented, we came to an agreement. This final project entails analyzing a case study of our choice, and in our case, we chose the Tacoma Narrows Bridge case study. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was built on September 1938. Its purpose was to connect Tacoma City with Kitsap Peninsula and State Route 16. The lead engineers were Leon Moisev and Clark Elridge. The bridge we are discussing was a suspension bridge, which as we know, they are more economical because they use less materials, so they are more cost effective. One of the main reasons the Gallopin Bridge collapsed was because one of the lead engineers tried to come up with an innovative design. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapsed primarily due to the aeroelastic flutter. The wind flow created a standing wave, which is a combination of two waves moving in opposite directions, each having the same amplitude and frequency. Now, moving forward, the team will expand on why this occurred and how it could have been prevented, along with the code of ethics. So here, we're going to cover what exactly happened. And what happened on the day of the disaster was it was very windy that day and high winds began hitting the bridge that caused oscillations. And if you don't know what oscillations are right here on the picture on the right, you can see that the bridge is kind of like uh, moving like up and down, like each side is higher than the other. So in the picture, one side of the sidewalk is higher than the other side of the sidewalk. And that is what is known as oscillations. So that began happening and that obviously can thrust cars and people up into the air and into the wire on the side of the bridge. And eventually, the strong winds caused about 600 feet of the bridge to break free and fall down and collapse, as you can see in the picture underneath this bullet point. So this bridge had a lot of management and design problems. This can be primarily seen with the fact that there's two consulting firms uh, working on this project. Um, each firm actually made their own individual uh, design changes from the original design that uh, Clark Eldridge had proposed. Ultimately what had happened was they had gone with Moisef's design because he proposed to lower down the cost from 11 million to 7 and ultimately choosing uh, lower down the cost of building the bridge did end up coming with its own uh, problems which would be the losing the structural integrity and sturdiness of the bridge as well as putting the safety of the general public using this bridge on the line um, it's even noted that by the workmen during the final stages of construction, they would notice how much the bridge would actually move under low wind conditions. They had tried to fix this problem the best that they could. However, it was more like putting a bandit on an open wound, considering the fact that they, after four months of the bridge being built, the bridge ended up collapsing due to the wind. Um, this brings into light, had there been a lot more procedures in place, this bridge more than likely would not have been open to the public to be using. <coughs> so in 
So for the ethics involved in the Tacoma Narrows bridge disaster, we're going to use the engineering code of ethics as a base with the main cannons involved being Cannon 1 and Cannon 6. With regards to Cannon 1, wind and aerodynamics weren't taken into account and that goes into holding paramount the safety, health and welfare of the public because as an engineer, one wants to do everything possible to make sure that the public remains safe when using any structure that someone has designed and created. So for Canon 6, conducting honorably, responsibly, and ethically to enhance the honor, reputation, and usefulness of the profession, after this disaster, civil engineering took a big hit to its reputation, especially considering how Moisef was involved with the construction of the Golden Gate Bridge and actually after the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster they had to temporarily close it to test the Golden Gate Bridge as well. The original designer of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, Clark Eldridge, did not agree with the changes made by Leon Moisef after it was discovered that Eldridge's design was too expensive. He knew that the bridge was too slender to support the strength of the winds. Eldridge was left in charge of the construction of the bridge and did not protest with his concerns of the structure of the bridge. So, so in addition to the disaster happening and millions of dollars being lost and the bridge causing hazards to life, there were also different types of moral problems caused by the disaster. Due to the disaster, people were thrust into different types of moral dilemmas, as you can see here in this picture that I made. Uh, so one example is plans and time management. So anybody who took the bridge as a, like a communal route or to drop off their kids or visit family now had to rearrange all their schedules, sacrifice time to go on detours and sacrifice any time that they were going to do anything else just to take that detour due to the bridge collapse. Another more dilemma that people were thrust into was how are we going to fund the demolition and the redoing of the project? Usually things like this are done through taxes, taxing the public so that they can do public works projects and with a combination of federal block grants. So now the more dilemma is, should we tax the people more to fund this or should we ask the government for money and take out loans as a state to fund it since this disaster happened. And then another dilemma that people were thrust into was how are we going to inform the public about this? And again, going back to the trolley problem, it's not necessarily the fault of the people involved making the decisions. It more goes back to the people who were involved getting them into the situation, which in this case would be the engineers involved, such as Leon Moisef. So the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was a suspension bridge. Um, it was actually the longest suspension bridge of its time. Uh, the main reason why the project decided to go with a suspension bridge um, design be was because of the fact that they needed uh, the bridge to be able to cross the 2,800 feet. Uh, and basically a suspension bridge traditionally was a lot more economical. They used a lot less materials. It was a lot more cost efficient, as well as the fact that they were just really good, sturdy bridges for long distance crossings. However, given the fact that they went with Mosef's design, Mosef had made a few innovative changes to the traditional suspension bridge um, design. However, these changes proved to be very ineffective and in fact proved to create quite a few problems with 
this bridge um there was a lot of accounts of the wind flow making the bridge move a lot and it didn't help that the bridge was very flexible so even under low wind conditions it even moved quite a lot a lot thus it gave the bridge the nickname galloping gertie so as we saw before before, there were multiple problems, including miscommunication, mismanagement, and not reporting known issues that were known to happen. Some solutions we have concluded will be useful to prevent accidents like this in similar projects will be to have everyone follow a set of ethical and practice standards, and there should also be a clear chain of command and workers should feel safe and free to report these problems without a fear of repercussion. Also, if there's a change in management during any step of the process, there should be a smooth transition from both the previous and the new administration coming in. And both of them should ensure that they both know how the project works, the safety of it, and also making sure that neither of them are trying to save money by trying to put in hazard the safety of the project finally there should be an implementation of a code of ethics and procedures to follow at every level of the organization involved so people know what to do whenever they find a problem or an issue After the Tacoma Narrows disaster, engineers everywhere began to evaluate their existing suspension bridges to minimize accidents caused by strong winds. An advisory board on the investigation of suspension bridges was created and lasted from 1942 to 1954 to better understand and identify design measures to counter the aerodynamic effects of wind. In 1950, a replacement of the Tacoma Narrows bridge was built using the blueprint very similar to Clark Eldridge's original. It incorporated deeper and wider truss, unlike Leon Moisev's design. Additionally, the deck was designed with several longitudinal slots covered by steel grating to allow air passage vertically through the deck, and hydraulic dampers were installed in various locations.